today I'm doing an experiment. A lot of these one gallon batches allow me to do this sort of crazy stuff. This one is, is not that crazy though. I was listening to the Brewlosophy podcast. It was called Staggered Pitching in Mixed Fermentation Beers, episode 79. They were talking about um, rep fermentations and mixed fermentations and if you pitch uh, all your dregs and uh, your bottle dregs and your lactobacillus and souring stuff post fermentation, it's been said that you might be able to get more sour beer art that way or sour quicker at least. Their experiment was pitching at the same time, all the stuff and then normal, normal fermentation and then adding all their dregs. Interesting results. But they didn't mention in passing, it'd be interesting to see where if you did Brett for two or three days first, then pitch a sack strain, would it be fruitier if he did the, did it the other way around? You do one beer with uh, just a regular like USO5 ale strain starting, then another beer starting with Brettanomyces about two days into fermentation, pitch the one that had the ale yeast in it with some Brettanomyces and pitch the one that had the Brettanomyces with an ale strain. Anecdotally, it's been also said that the earlier you pitch bread, especially for initial fermentation, the fruitier it can be. I've experimented with that myself, and I would say I wouldn't necessarily taste the fruit in it, but I did definitely get some um, more straightforward, just ale-tasting beer. Didn't have any, like, barnyard to it. Cassinii is the classic, more fruity-producing bread strain that's out there. That's what I'm trying today. I'm not making a starter with it. Seems like it's a fair amount to do to split into two uh, two gallon jugs. Well, one gallon each. The grain today um, is conducive for Brett. I'm using 20% uh, unmalted wheat. Unmalted wheat has not been germinated, so um, the starches aren't readily accessible. So therefore, it won't break down that well, and you're left with more longer starchy sugar chains. A lot of like lambic brewers will use this because um, it can chew it over the course of years and leave that body in there and add the flavor that the, all the bugs can chew on over the course of that time. Brett can get really low in fermentation. It can get down to like almost zero. So I want a little bit of body back in there um, and uh, mashing a little high, like 155 degrees Fahrenheit range. So uh, just to promote a little more of that long dextrins as well. So uh, that's pretty much it. I'm using some Peco hops as some at boil, about 25 IBUs. So I'm gonna keep it low in the IBUs to see what I can get out of the Brett more than anything. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's begin this puppy. I was going for 1050. <laughs> that is some bad efficiency. That's like 55%. I realized early on, right when I bought the ingredients, I was like, you know, I might need to bump this up a little bit. I didn't do it. The reason is, is that unmalted wheat has not been germinated. So the conversion on that is very, very low. So you almost got to look at it as like a little bit of converting, uh, but not that much, so my efficiency suffered. I should I should have bumped up my two row grain bill by a pound probably, and compensated for that. I've only used unmalted wheat maybe two or three times. I don't remember getting this kind of bad efficiency, so uh, it's worth doing again to see, for what it's worth. Maybe it's just my bad brewing. Okay, there's one. Before I move on, I'm actually gonna label this as the one that's starting with a regular Saccharomyces strain. All right, I have some slurry from a uh, beer that was very, very similar. Similar, actually had Peco in it as well for about 25 IBUs. I'm gonna use this slurry for both of them. First, I'm measuring out 20 milliliters of slurry. This MrMalty.com recommends. So this is Sac first. All right, I'm screw this on. Not all the way tight, but a little bit loose. I have like about 40 milliliters. I'll use exactly 20 again when I uh, pitch it for the Brett one. So I'll set that aside for the moment. All right, Brett now. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is the variable where I was a little concerned about, and that is that I should, probably should have made a starter with this Brett. I almost did it, and I was like, you know what? I'm only doing one gallon or two gallons, so I don't need a lot of it, but there is not a lot in here. So we're like to there. It's about 10 milliliters of Brett. That's five per one gallon. I know it's very fresh yeast. It's I think it's under what I should do. I think it'd be closer to like 10 milliliters, du double what this is. It's a hardy strain, it'll grow. It, I'm not worried about that. I just don't want to just like stress out and then produce flavors that wouldn't be conducive to what I'm doing. But here we are. So I gotta be careful here and pour only half of this in there. It's like a, it's like a science experiment. It's like to be about half to me. That's all that's left. <laughs> yeah. Nailing it. Okay, well this only has to last two days. There could be some oxygen issues, so I'm actually gonna purge this little tube. I don't know if it's really needed. Uh, I got the sack labeled here as the first starter, the first one. Brett, starting with Brett on this one. The gravity was at 1054, I was going for 1060. That efficiency was a problem for sure for this. But that's okay. Um, in two days, I'm gonna see how they are. I really hope the Brett one takes off. And because I wanna pitch them around the same time, I might have to even wait three days to, to pitch it, the Brett one especially. So uh, yeah, let's go uh, cut in then a couple days from now. Three days later, I brewed this on a Sunday. Today is a Wednesday, Wednesday evening to be exact. Here we have a fermented, well now fermenting, this is the Brett one. It was not fermenting or showed signs of fermentation as of yesterday. Whereas the one I did with the sack strain was already pretty much done looking. And you can see all the gunk on there. I mean, it's, it tore through it. I was trying to align this up to do it where the timing would be right. I could pitch both the opposite yeast at high Krausen. That's not working out. So what I'm gonna do is do the, the one that was the, the sack strain, the one that's done fermenting. I'm gonna pitch some Brett into it now. And then the one that was pitched with Brett initially, I'm going to add the rest of the yeast for that uh, probably tomorrow. I wanna wait for the Krausen to fall a little bit, wait for it to kind of finish out fermenting so I can get an idea of what each one would do um, with equal fermentation. But uh, this is the Brett. So what I have left of it. The Brett one that was fermented in the secondary, I'll probably let it go a little longer because the secondary, I think it'll might need time to chew on all the carbohydrates and whatnot. Where the one I, I pitched with Brett initially, it'll probably chew through it already and it won't, it'll finish what it's doing. So there you go. I think I'll call the video here and we'll do it. I'll do a tasting uh, with this in a separate video because it just it might take too long to wait for the um, this one, the secondary, to really finish out. Today is February twenty sixth, two thousand nineteen. It could be done the one with the secondary, especially at the end of March, maybe mid April is the latest. So I need to let it do its due diligence so I don't so I don't get bottle bombs. So uh, there you go. This is the initial stages of this. I guess maybe a part one, you could call it. But um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the results of this. And uh, like, subscribe. Keep getting weird. Experiments. See you next time.